Welcome to the PL Studio Tour 2021. So I want to start this video off by taking a trip down memory lane because I actually started building this studio space back in 2015, but I didn't have the intention of having it as a YouTube studio. That is something that came when I moved in here in December of 2019. I actually can't believe that this is the same studio space that I was in in 2019 because they look so much different. There was no paint on the wall, there was just dry walls, there was nothing in here and I just tried to get everything up as quickly as I could. But now we're starting to get to the place where I really enjoy the look of the studio, the feel of the studio and everything here makes it so much easier to produce videos on a daily basis and it's also a very creative space. Let me give you the tour. We're gonna start all the way from the beginning. You wanna know a fun fact? I actually used to have a rehearsal place with my band when I was 15 years old in this very attic that I'm standing right now. That's pretty cool. The most important thing when you enter the studio. These slippers are so damn ugly, but they're so comfortable. Birkenstock, huh? So the first thing that you'll see when you enter the studio is the new studio space that I built this year to expand my YouTube studio and make the entire space bigger to have more place to actually work with. And I haven't done any kind of sound treatment to this room because this room is not meant to like be recording my talking head videos. That is where I have my office space. But one of the main things that I had in mind when I built this place was to have everything like streamlined to be able to make videos and have it very clean and no obstacles in the way. And at the same time, being a very creative space. This right here is the latest addition to the studio and this is the podcast corner. This is something that I had in mind when I started building the entire space because I wanted to have a podcast corner and a bar and a whiskey shelf. Those things were like main priorities for me when I started building this. And now I finally had this place done and it just feels good to have everything like set and ready to go so that you can just sit down, hit record and don't have to think about like setting everything up. And uh, I also decided to move the PL logo from my office out here. Main reason is because I wanted to be in full control of the lighting in my studio. Moving it out here gave the bar a little bit of a better feeling. And it's also a little bit more cozy when you're out here sitting and you have this nice neon sign in the background. But the bar is just a sheet bar that I built on my own with stuff from Ikea and a couple of E. Do you say ew, 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 palettes? I'm just gonna say palettes. But it looks good and it feels good as well. And being able to have a bar with a fridge here is great whenever you have guests over and also to be able to grab a drink if you want one. We got some Monster Energy, not sponsored. We got some uh, nice Swedish beer, Marie de Stords, carbonated water and some Coke Zero. Maybe a little bit of uh, Lucas Itroni here so that we can have a little bit of 
Marcel? You know, I haven't had a drink with sugar in it for the last 15 years. It's like always zero or like carbonated water. And then of course we had the whiskey shelf. This is something that I personally just wanted to have in the studio because I like whiskey, especially single malt, not smoky, because smoky is not my thing. I probably had a bad experience in my youth, but single malt, non-smoky, preferably sherry casks. Something that was very important for me when I built this place was that I wanted to have as good lighting as I possibly could have. So all the ambient lights that you can see, for example, over here on the whiskey shelf, is Philips Hue. Unfortunately though, Philips Hue is not like superb when it comes to shooting at high frame rates, but when you're shooting in like 50 FPS or regular videos, then it doesn't really matter because they look good in the background of your videos. And instead of having any kind of like ceiling lamps here in the studio, I actually decided to put in LED strips into each and every one of these beams so that I can control them with my phone and decide on the color, the strength, and what kind of like vibe that I wanna have here in the studio. And I also did the same thing with the wall over here because you can see that it has like slightly blue tint. That's because we have a Philips Hue LED strip right here. But the main lights that are giving us this like, mm, powerful video light is the Nanlite Forza 300 together with the Nanlite Forza 500. And that's where I wanna say a huge thank you to Nanlite for uh, providing me with the lights that I need. And I'm super honored to be like a part of the Nanlite ambassador team. And if you know me, then you know that I love mounting stuff up from the ground. So I don't have anything sitting on the ground. So we have the panel here for the Forza that you can see right here which is the 300 watt. And then over here on this side, a mix panel that is giving us a little bit of a kick here in the back so that we'll have a little bit of like an orange tint. And then we have the Forza 500 that I mounted to this beam that is going up here and voila. So we can just adjust this depending on where we wanna have it. If we wanna have like some product videos that we want to shoot, then we can just spin it around. And since we have this, C-stand handle basically, then we can just adjust it and make it look the way that we want it to, which is pretty awesome because it makes things so much easier. And the same thing goes for this. One of the things that was really crucial when building this space was that I wanted to have really, really many outputs. So we have four on each beams and a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beams. And that gives us a total of 28 power outputs that we can use wherever we are in the studio. And then we also have a couple of ones here in the wall as well, so that we can place things close to the walls without uh, having to like drag the cables out to the beams. And to be able to mount the Philips Hue LED strips into the ceiling, I have attached a, I don't know what you call this in uh, English, but we say Fagrenesdusa to this beam. And if I wanna attach anything else to the beam, then I can just plug in anything that I want into those without having to pull some new cords from the power outputs down below, huh? I also have a Philips Hue strip here in the bar as well to give it that little like mm, feeling to it. It's a nice ambient tone and you can change it the way that you want it. And here we have an iPhone charger so that when you come over, you can just take your iPhone, put it here and then it can rest, get charged and all that good stuff, huh? And then of course, I wanted to have the uh, charging stations for my Nanlite power tubes here on the beam so that we can turn them on if we wanna have some nice lighting. Same thing goes over here. It also gives us this nice ambient light if we wanna have that. So you can see that it reflects pretty good here in the bar. I just love power tubes. They're so good. <laughs> I also do have a LED strip in the back of the bar as well to give us a little bit more of an ambience. I really like the wooden look. This is probably not gonna be finished <laughs> anytime soon, but I don't mind the look. I think it looks pretty decent. So this switch is something that I put up to make things easier for when someone is visiting. My thought is that whenever someone comes over and wants to have some like environmental shots of Gothenburg or something similar, then they can just connect their computer to that and then access my NAS in the office and download the videos that they wanna use in their video if they're making a video. They don't have to make a video and you don't have to use this switch if you don't want to. 
And then of course the last thing that we got is the motorized backdrop for portrait shots, b-roll videos, whatever it might be that needs a background. And it's actually a pretty nifty thing that you control with this remote, so you just pull it up and then you can just choose whatever kind of backdrop that you want to use. <laughs> and over here I'm creating some sort of workspace. I haven't really decided how it's going to look. This is actually my old iMac from I think 2009. That's pretty insane, right? Still works, but I don't use it. I just have it because it looks good. I think that that was everything out here. So let's go into the office. Hey. <laughs> So the gear wall is something that I created, I think it was like one and a half year ago, and uh, it's a very neat place to have all your gear stored and easily accessible as well. Over here I have the DJI Ronin S2, the DJI Osmo gimbal, and then we have my good old trustworthy DJI Ronin S, that is my first gimbal. I have the Mavic Air 2, the Rhino slider together with the Rhino R2 head, if you haven't tried it, and if you're looking for a slider, I highly recommend this one because I use it in a lot of my videos. I have the Manfrotto 190X and then the viral wire thing that I put my A7 III on. Something that I don't use, but it looks good. So I'm just gonna have it here. And then we have the Arlo security cameras. Very good. I have a couple of these placed out in the studio. So I'm watching. And over here, we have the tool wall. The, we have the screwdriver, some gaff tape, some uh, different kind of uh, tools that you might need. And then this as well, which is the charger for the big ass RC car that I got, which is just pure fun and epicness <laughs> that I highly recommend anyone to try out. This is also to have everything easily accessible whenever you need it. Simple, simple things. And this is the new lounge. I previously had a couple of chairs that I think looked good, but they're out in the new studio now. But I decided to upgrade so that you can actually sit here and watch the TV, have a cup of coffee, you know, talk, whatever you want to do, without feeling that it's not comfortable. Since I'm a Swede, almost all of the furniture is from Ikea. We have uh, two Nerf guns and uh, the DJI Air 2S. And this is actually one of my favorite things. And that is the ceiling mounted TV. This is a Sony 4K OLED TV 55 inch. And it's a great TV, fantastic to have whenever you have someone over and you wanna watch through some videos or watch a movie, whatever it might be. And I also have a PlayStation 4 mounted to the wall here so that you can play some video games if you want to do that. This is actually somewhat of a new corner because this is Edwin's corner that I have upgraded lately to make it a little bit of a workstation because previously it was just a crap gathering station, if you can say it like that. Now we have a nice Dell ultrawide screen where he can just plug in his computer, start working, do things that he wants. And uh, if we have a guest and Edwin's not here, they can use this as well. And a fun fact, when I moved in to this studio, I actually had my first desk right here and thought that that was going to be my main angle for all my YouTube videos moving forward. <laughs> that, that didn't work. Here's the desk that I record my videos at. And if you wanna see like an entire desk setup video, then I'm gonna link it right here because I did a desk setup tour just a while back. This is where I record like 95% of all the videos that I do. And this is where I do all my work, all my editing, everything that might need to be done at a computer is done right here. I've gotten a lot of questions if these guns are real, and no, they're not. This is a soft air gun that we bought for the short film Aftermath that we shot one year ago. And it actually burned like the first two days that we had it, so you can't even shoot the gun. And uh, this gun is the one that I use whenever I'm in my rival's character. And then of course I have uh, my guitar. This was actually a huge piece of my youth because I was playing guitar for like eight years before I decided to quit and uh, just do it for fun. So yeah, I, I still have it. I don't want to sell it. I think it's good and I think it's uh, 
a lot of sentimental value for me to keep it. And oh, so many questions I've gotten about this shovel. This shovel is actually the first product that I did a paid commercial for on an international level. And that is why it's hanging here on my wall because it's memorabilia, if you say it like that. It's a great memory of where everything started and where I am right now. What would a studio tour be without taking down the hammocker? Having a hammock in the studio is probably one of the best ideas that I've gotten ever because it's just so comfy to, to lie here if you want to watch TV and just like <sighs> and also what kind of host would I be if I didn't put a hammock out here in the new studio space as well. I don't only have one hammock here, I actually have two so that if I have a guest we can both chillax in the hammocks. Huh? Since all the ambient lights are Philips Hue and all the NAND lights are connected to Philips Hue smart plugs, I can actually control everything in the entire studio and the office with Google Home. Can you turn off the lights in the studio? Got it. Turning off 18 lights. Can you turn on all the lights in the studio? Got it. Turning 34 lights on. Hey. And uh, I think that that is basically everything that I got here in the office that is of interest of actually showing you. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, like the video if you thought it was fun. And uh, yeah, you know, really, really hope that uh, you're gonna stick around for the next one because I have a lot in the pipe. Really hope that you're as eager as I am to see what is coming in the future. All right, have a good one. Peter from Sweden is saying goodbye. Take care, all the best, see ya.